Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll see how to install the Creality Sprite Pro Extruder. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to install the Creality Sprite Pro extruder on this ever so slightly modified Ender 3 Max. So what is the Sprite Pro extruder? It's a lightweight, dual-gear, direct-drive extruder that made its debut on the Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. It differs from the original Sprite extruder by having an all-metal heat break instead of one lined with PTFE tubing. On 3D printers with PTFE-lined hotends like the stock hotend on the Ender 3 Max, as well as the original Sprite extruder, the firmware usually limits the maximum nozzle temperature to about 260 degrees Celsius. And I personally won't run a PTFE-lined hot end higher than about 235 degrees Celsius because at around 240 degrees, the PTFE can start to degrade and release gases that are not the safest thing you could be breathing. But by not having that PTFE liner down in the hot side of things, the nozzle on the Sprite Pro can be heated up to 300 degrees Celsius. So the kit contains a small manual, the Sprite Pro extruder, a new X carriage, a handful of screws, a spare nozzle, and a nice long ribbon cable to connect the extruder to the printer's mainboard. Now before I get into installing the Sprite Pro, there are a couple of points to cover. While the Sprite Pro can achieve a hot end temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, you may need to upgrade the firmware on your printer to enable the higher temperature. Also, while the Sprite Pro has a mounting point for a CR Touch bed probe, one isn't included. If you already have a bed probe installed and it's not a CR Touch, you may need to find and print or design and print a mount for it if you want to continue using it. And depending on your printer, you may need to buy a spool holder or print one before you start. My Frankenstein-esque Ender 3 Max V2 Pro that I cobbled together had the Max's standard side-mounted spool holder, but having the spool mounted low and in the back was not going to work well for a direct drive extruder. So I downloaded and printed one and bolted it up here on the top. Sorry, this printer is kind of tall. I could also have grabbed one from another printer or bought a really nice one for about 15 bucks on Amazon. But I chose the path of medium resistance. I mean, I have 3D printers, why not 3D print a spool holder, right? And finally, if your printer has a filament runout sensor, you may need to come up with an alternate way to mount it or simply disable it. On my printer, installing the Sprite Pro means I'm converting from a Bowden feed system to a direct drive extruder, and the stock position for the filament runout sensor is right before the extruder stepper motor. Since this project involves removing the extruder stepper motor and the Bowden tube, there wasn't a convenient place for the filament sensor. I think for now I'm going to remove the sensor and do without. So with that out of the way, here's how to install the Sprite Pro extruder. Turn off the printer and unplug its power cable. Unplug the extruder stepper motor and the filament sensor. Remove the Bowden tube from the extruder assembly by pressing the ring toward the extruder while pulling the tubing out. Remove the screws securing the extruder assembly in place, then remove the extruder and the extruder stepper motor. Remove the existing X carriage with the hot end assembly and set it aside. It'll still be connected by its wiring, but that's okay. To do this, loosen the X axis belt's tension and disconnect the belt from the X carriage. Then remove the screws holding the fan shroud to the X carriage. This will allow you to access the nylock nut that secures the lower wheel to the X carriage. Loosen the screw that holds the lower wheel in place, which loosens that wheel, and then remove the X carriage from the X axis arm. Now install the new X carriage onto the X axis arm. To do this, loosen the screw that holds the lower wheel in place just like you did when removing the original one, 
Then place the X carriage onto the arm and tighten the screw again to secure it. Adjust the eccentric nut to ensure smooth movement of the X carriage with no play or wobble. Reattach the X axis belt to the X carriage and set its tension to your liking. Attach the Sprite Pro extruder to the new X-Carriage using the included screws. Now it's time to take care of the wiring. Open the electronics enclosure to access the printer's mainboard. Remove the top screw from the electronics enclosure. Then place the printer on its side and remove the three bottom screws securing the cover. The cover has a fan attached, so be aware of the fan's wires. Now it's time to unplug things, but first, make note of where everything is so you can plug things from the new wiring harness into the correct place. Just a quick note, the manual that's included with the kit does show you a diagram of a Creality V4.2.2 board with the ports labeled. But taking a picture or tin of the main board with your phone before you unplug things can be super helpful. So with that said, disconnect the heater cartridge. This requires loosening the screws on the terminal block that clamp its wires in place. Then disconnect the hot end fan from the terminal block. Note where the red wire and the black wire go. That'll be important when connecting the ribbon cable in a few minutes. Unplug the extruder stepper motor from the socket marked E. This particular plug is part of a ribbon cable that also handles the X-axis stepper motor and the X-axis end stop, so it's going to stay here in the electronics enclosure, but it does need to be unplugged. Unplug the parts cooling fans. On this printer, there are two. Unplug the hot end thermistor. On this board, it's in the socket marked TH for thermistor hot end. Unplug the bed touch probe if you have one. Now that should do it for the unplugging phase. You should now be able to remove the cable bundle that goes to the hot end. Now it's time to plug in the ribbon cables connectors. Connect to the heater cartridge and hot end fan. These have wire ferrules on the ends. Insert the ferrules into the terminals where the old heater cartridge and fan were connected. The heater cartridge's wires are marked with plus and minus, but since the heater cartridge isn't polarized, it really doesn't care. The fan, however, does care about positive and negative, and on this board, the fan minus connection goes here, and the fan plus connection goes here. Next, plug the extruder stepper motor into the socket marked E. Connect the parts cooling fans plug, K-Fan, into the socket marked K-Fan. Plug the hot end thermistor into the socket marked TH. And finally, plug in the bed touch probe connector. This printer's main board has a 5-pin socket here to accommodate the probe. Though I don't have a bed probe installed, if I want to add one I can buy a CR touch, mount it on the Sprite, and plug its cable into the probe socket on the sprite end of things. There are a couple of connectors left over on the ribbon cable, but the manual doesn't say what they are or where they go. So just tuck them out of the way and we'll call it good. Okay, that should be it for wiring. Carefully route the ribbon cable out of the enclosure. Close up the electronics box, putting the screws back in place. Then bring the printer to its full upright and locked position. Plug the ribbon cable into the Sprite Pro extruder, then move the carriage all the way to the right side of the printer and use a zip tie or two to secure the ribbon cable to the bracket where the old extruder stepper motor used to be. This will ensure you've got enough slack in the ribbon cable when the nozzle is at the far right side, and it should keep the cable from getting caught on your prints. With everything connected, now would be a great time to test a few things to make sure the wiring is connected properly. Plug in the printer and turn it on. On this printer, the hot end fan should be running full time, so I want to be sure it's running. And it is. 
Next, I want to make sure the part's cooling fan is working. So I'll turn that on from the screen. And that's working too. So far, so good. Next, I want to make sure the hot end thermistor is working. So a quick glance at the screen should show me a temperature similar to what the bed is showing. In other words, room temperature. And finally, I want to make sure the heater cartridge is working, so I'll set the nozzle temperature to about 200 degrees to make sure it's heating up. I'll let that sit for a few minutes to let the nozzle heat up and then stabilize at the temperature that I set. If any of these tests aren't giving you the results you expect, turn the printer off, unplug it, and check your wiring to make sure everything's connected properly. With that testing completed, the next thing to do is adjust the E-steps, or steps per millimeter, for the extruder. The manual says it needs to be set to 424.9 steps per millimeter. So go into your printer settings and adjust it to the new value. Then save the configuration so the printer remembers it. If, for some reason, your printer doesn't let you set it that high, or if it feels like you're going to have to turn the knob a million times to make that adjustment, you can instead create a simple G-code file to do it for you. The guide has the full how-to on this, but the TLDR is that you create a text file with two lines of G-code in it. One line sets the E-steps, and the second line saves that setting. But however you go about setting and saving the E-steps, it would be a good idea to turn the printer off and on again, then check the steps per millimeter setting to confirm that the E-steps are set to the correct value, 424.9. With the Sprite Pro installed and the E-steps set, the last thing to do is level the bed. You can't skip this step because the entire extruder and hot end got replaced, and it is extremely unlikely that the nozzle is going to be at the exact same height when the Z-axis is homed as it was before this project. Now you can use the paper between the nozzle and bed method, but I'm a fan of Chuck Hellebuck's e-leveler tool, so I used that. And I've got a whole video here showing how to use this clever manual bed leveler, so give that a look if you're interested. But whatever method you use, level the bed. Oh, one thing to be aware of when switching from a Bowden drive to a direct drive extruder. You need a lot less retraction with the direct drive. In fact, with the Sprite Pro, you should only need about 0.8 millimeters of retraction, and your retraction speed should be about 30 millimeters per second. I just wanted to put that out there so you're not trying to do 5 or 6 millimeters of retraction and then wondering why your prints aren't coming out so good. So anyway, after I got the bed leveled, I ran a test print. For this test, I printed the cat model that came with the Ender 3 S1 Pro, and I chose it because it had been sliced to print with this extruder. It took a little over three hours to finish printing, and it turned out really good. Check it out. Okay, so that's how to install the Sprite Pro extruder. The installation process seemed easier than some of the other extruder upgrades I've done, and I think that's because all the connections to the extruder were bundled in this one ribbon cable. And the print quality I got on the test print was great. Now remember, if your printer won't let you set the nozzle temperature up to 300 degrees, you're probably going to have to edit and compile and install firmware for your printer. Uh, unless your printer's manufacturer has firmware you can download that'll enable nozzle temperatures of up to 300 degrees. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, Let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.